In this video, I'm going to explore the Beaker browser. And by explore, I genuinely mean explore. So I'll be live, real time, etc. So I like to do these things. The Beaker browser can be found here at uh, https colon slash slash beaker, B E A K E R, browser, B R O W S E R dot com. And here's the website. So what the Beaker browser is, as, as the website says, it's an experimental browser for exploring and building the peer-to-peer -peer web. So the idea here is that uh, instead of accessing web servers directly, you're accessing other peers out there who are using something like the Beaker browser. So pretty straightforward. Let's click on install Beaker. You have choices. If you really want to build it from source, you can. I wouldn't. So I'm running on Windows, so I'll download on Windows. Save my file, and it's going to save as usual up here. So while this is saving, the whole idea of the distributed web is to move away from the centralized model of uh, clients and servers or even social networks like Facebook and Twitter, where we have to access all of our content from these centralized servers. Instead, we're accessing our content directly from each other, and each of us plays a role in hosting part of the overall web. And that's also what takes care of some sustainability problems as well, right? We don't have to pay for great, big, humongous web servers we've got the small servers that are also our browsers. So, okay, our download is finished, so here it is. I'm going to click on it, and that will launch the executable. I'm going to click Run. Pretty normal installation, right? So, it's naturally started in the other window. So, here we go. It's busy installing, installing. Please wait, because we have to wait for it. I'm just hoping it doesn't ask me to uh, reboot the machine, so that would be a bit annoying. So the reason why I'm talking about this distributed web is because I'm thinking the future of learning resources is going to be something like that distributed web. All kinds of reasons for that. Uh, open educational resources have always had sustainability problems. Uh, you know, it costs a lot of money to uh, run a great big web server. Okay, so it launched in the other window. Here it is. So, welcome to Beaker. So, instead, I can use something like Beaker Browser here to uh, maintain my part of the whole open educational resources community. So let's set Beaker Browser as the default browser for DAT URLs. DAT is, instead of HTTP, DAT is the new prefix that we use for distributed web URLs. So I'm going to set that as yes, because I don't have anything else to do this. Um, the next thing now, so I can create a peer-to-peer -peer website. I can see what others have built, or I can learn more. So I'm going to see what other people have built first before launching into creating my own website. So let's see what others have built. So now it's launching me in a new tab. So I can come back to that old tab if I want. So here we are. I'm exploring the peer-to-peer -peer web. Um, so there's not a whole lot so far. Um, Oh, well, maybe there's more here. How about albums? Let's see, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, destroy the science, digital devices. Um, now, one of the problems that we've had so far with the distributed web is that the speed isn't there. This is true, obviously, here. Uh, part, of, part of the reason it's true here is that uh, our local internet service doesn't trust anything that's new. So, um, but it's also true on internet uh, 
Interplanetary File Service. So here we have, right, obtained on the Decentranet. So I could play some music here, or I could download the album, um, or I could even buy it and stream it on centralized value extraction bottlenecks and all the usual suspects. So that's one thing. What else could we explore? Uh, let's look at modules. So these are code libraries, web components, etc. Not a whole lot there. Uh, user pages. Now we're getting into some more interesting things here. Um, yeah, not a whole lot. It's, just, it's still really early days, right? Uh, you wouldn't think so. The uh, DAT protocol was actually uh, developed back in 2013. Um, but you know, I mean, uh, think about how long it took for the HTTP protocol, which was developed back in, as I recall, 1993, and it was years before it became widely used. So here we have, see up here, it's a DAT protocol, and here I am uh, looking at uh, Alex Perrier's uh, website. And uh, see, there's various other DAT uh, URLs. And now, now we're moving pretty quickly because we know where his website is. So uh, let's have a look at another site. So, oh, no DNS record found for DAT. I guess it's gone. That's too bad. Uh, some things never change, eh? Uh, how about Chad Mezzala? I'm sort of afraid with some of these because this is live video. Again, it's going to take a little bit of time to load. Um, and, and this is the discovery process, right? Finding out where, in fact, these files are actually located out there in that distributed web somewhere. Um, and it's going to vary a lot uh, depending on the size of the network, uh, the speed of the data connections, uh, the density of the internet files, etc. And it doesn't like, this is an interesting result. It doesn't see seem like anyone is sharing this site right now. That's what can happen in the decentralized web. Uh, you know, I mean, if the person stops their Beaker browser and nobody has picked up that website and is sharing it, um, it goes away. So there's kind of an impermanence, that, but, but it's a useful impermanence. If it was a site that people wanted, uh, then, you know, and people went to it, like if I, when I go to the other website, uh, like this one, or, or the one that we just saw here before, now I'm sharing it as well as the other people. So, and then people who are close to me will be able to access it from my browser instead of from the source. That's how a decentralized web works, right? Uh, you know, we, we pay for um, our site that we're accessing by making that site available to other people. Um, here's Ben Wordmuller. Uh, you might recall Ben Wordmuller. Um, we uh, interviewed him earlier in the course. And uh, here are some of his, of his more detailed thoughts. He hard hand coded this quickly following the 2018 decentralized web uh, summit. So that's interesting. So he's deliberately used so a link to which helped me get started. So let's see Tara Vanshill's excellent tutorial. And loading and again it's going to take a wee bit. Ben's came up right away. That's interesting, right? So that means probably, probably that a lot of people are accessing this site. This one uh, a bit slower. Um, oh this is kind of neat, right? So uh, a link to Tara's excellent tutorial will be bright because it's a DAT link whereas the link to my own blog is darker because it's served over traditional HTTP. Oh, here we go. Uh, wow, that was close. <laughs> so now I'm sharing this uh, site, so the next person, uh, it won't have disappeared on them. So this was updated just this past August. 
This is neat. Uh, her publishing workflow involves three tools. Hugo static site generator, generator dat CLI command line interface, and then home base for syncing updates from the dat to the website HTTPS, HTTPS version. So, and uh, we'll have a look at this uh, later on uh, off video. So let's go back to our opening tab. Let's create a peer-to-peer -peer website using uh, Beaker Browser. Um, so I just click on that. And uh, so here's my new untitled website. So I'll call it Stevens Web, which takes me back to the early days of the web, back in the 1990s when Stevens Web was back then my original uh, website. So um, now, so these are the files. Okay. Uh, so this is the network activity. Nobody's looking at my website. Uh, and here are the settings. So now see, I can set a local folder to access this site's files from outside the browser. Um, so uh, so Stevens test dot dat website. Oops, it's not a dot. And website and save. Okay. You can even have a, a donation page, and Beaker will show a heart icon. That's nice. Uh, okay, so let's go back to files, right? So let's add a readme file. So here it is. And I can edit it. So this is the, the readme file. This is the readme. So let's save that. Let's look at the preview mode. So it doesn't look like much. Oh, this is the open. Okay, so this is my website in preview mode. So let's come back here now. Um, and uh, we'll go back to, um, see, now this is interesting, right? It's these, This is the list of all the updated versions and all the versions that I've added to this. So what I really want to do is add a file. So Let's do a plus, and actually I want to, I could either create a file or import files. So I'm going to import files. Actually, I'm going to import a folder, and I'm going to import the folder that I created for IPFS uh, yesterday. So that was here, and then it was down a ways, go IPFS in the IPFS site. I'm actually gonna add that and see if that works, and, and there it is, right? So now let's open the preview. Still looks the same, okay, because I need to create a link to my IPFS site, I guess. So index.html, here's my index.html site. And uh, so let's create a link to my IPFS site. Um, so I want to edit this. So I'm editing it now. So make a draft equals uh, IPFS. So that's. Let's just make it really clear that I need a subdirectory here. IPFS site. Okay, save. And uh, so review one change. So there's the one unpublished change. But uh, let's go back first. We'll open the preview. Here's the link to my IPFS site. And it couldn't find it. Probably because I had a bad link. <laughs> uh, this website was going to look at that, the beaker browser. Oh, maybe I 
should actually have made this a dot trunk. Maybe, maybe. So let's uh, go back to index. Let's do a dot. Oh, how do you do a dot link? Oh no, it is a dot link. Plus, yeah. So I think this should work if I publish it, but I don't know for sure. Uh, again, a lot of this stuff you're gonna have to play around with, experiment. Uh, this is the uh, this is the way of this stuff, right? Um, you have to experiment with these things. Um, so let's go back here to this uh, review one change. There's my change. Let's publish all. Publish all changes to Stevens Web. Yes. Okay, and now let's open it in the browser. Still can't find it. Don't know why. Um, oh, well, obviously I didn't add it to my site. Right? I guess I thought I did, but I didn't. So, files. So, uh, oh, IPFS site. That's why. I <laughs> typed in the actual wrong link. So let's edit this and we'll try this IPFS site. <laughs> All right, let's save this. All right, um, let's uh, go, go back here to files. Now, where, where did I get my published version preview? Review one change. Yeah, you see, you have to review the change in order to publish it. Tricky workflow. It's a lot like GitHub in that way, but this workflow is a bit clearer. They're not using strange words like commit or things like that. Publish all. Let's publish the change again. So let's open it up. Let's see if this works. And it does. So there we have it. Um, I've published to the uh, decentralized web and uh, that's all that we had to do to make Beaker Browser and, and Stevens Web part of the wonderful world of the de decentralized web. Not sure how yet to get myself on the index of uh, home pages, but this gets you started anyways. And that was the objective of today's video. So this was part of eLearning 3.0, uh, the module on resources. I'm Stephen Downs. Thanks for watching.